In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Vexel Art Photoshop action. So the way the action works is you open up your photo, you fill in your subject with a color, and display the action. So here's the effect that the action creates. So as you can see, what the action does, it turns your photo into Vexel Art, and uh, the action creates a lot of details, and the results that you get are fully layered. So there is a lot of options for customizing, and uh, the action also creates 20% uh, color looks that you can choose from. Okay, let me just close these two windows. So, for use the action, there are just a few things that you should check to make sure that the action will run without any errors. So, the first thing that you should check is that your photo is a background layer, so it should be called background and have this little lock icon. So, if you have something like this or anything else, just go to layer, new, and choose a background from layer. And then go click on this menu icon over here and choose panel options. And just make sure that this option here, the add copy to copy layers and groups, is checked. Then go to image mode and just check if your photo is in the RGB color mode, 8-bit kennel. And then choose the image size from here. So for best results you should use the photos that are around from 20 to 3500 pixels wider height. Okay, so to load the action go to window, actions. Click on the menu icon over here, load actions. And just to choose the action according to Photoshop version. Just select the action file, click load and the action folder will appear here in your actions panel and when you open the folder you'll find the action here so all you have to do now is just go to layer new layer to create a new layer and just name it brush and it's very important that you type brush exactly like this uh, because the otherwise the action won't work so you have to um, type the brush all letters lowercase and now all you have to do is you can just hit the keyboard to select the brush tool um, you can choose any color, color is not matter, and pick some higher soft brush and just fill in your side with the color. And also if it's easier for you, uh, you can just make a selection of your subject and then fill it with the color. And it's important that you have that color fill on this layer. So I already done that before, so I'm just gonna open my PSD file. So here it is. So it doesn't matter if you're brushing over your subject or you're just uh, making a selection or around your subject, then fill it with a color. Uh, what is important that you have that color fill on this brush layer. All right, so and all you have to do now is just select the Vexel uh, action and just click play. And I'm going to fasten the video here and I'm going to get back as soon as the action is finished and then I'm going to go through all the layers to show you how each layer works, uh, how it affects the design and how can you customize it. Okay, so the action is just finished, so I'm just going to close the actions panel. And the first thing that you're probably going to do each time you run the action is to just quickly close down all these folders. So how to do that? Just hold Control and Alt buttons for PC or Command Option for Mac. And while this folder is selected, just click on this arrow here. And that way, I'm just going to close down all the folders. So I'm going to start customizing these effects from the bottom. And I'm just going to hide uh, this layer for now. I'm going to explain later why. So the first layer we got here is the background color. And how you change the background color is you just double click on this color box here and you can just choose any color uh, that you like. So, I'm gonna choose this one. And next we got here uh, is the uh, background shapes folder. So when you open the folder, you see that background shapes are fully layered. And firstly, we got here these three layers that are hidden by default, so you can turn them on if you like and see just how they go with your photo if you don't like and simply uh, hide them again and um, you can also uh, change the opacity of any of these layers how you change the opacity just click on the vert opacity and drag it aside or you can click on this arrow here and then just move this slider around okay so I'm gonna leave these three layers hidden by as, uh, by default. So, uh, next layer we got here, and um, we can also change its opacity. I'm gonna do it like this. And now we got uh, several uh, background uh, shapes layers, and they each got this color fill above it. So, you can select any of these uh, background shapes, and if you like, you can just using the move tool, you can just move these shapes around, or you can press Control, Command, T on your keyboard to rotate them, or scale them, and other. Also, if there is some part of this shape that you don't like, you can either hide this layer, or just select this layer mask, set from color to black, and 
choose just the hard or, or soft brush and just remove any part of your of the background shape that you don't like and you can then if you wish to uh, return that shape uh, part of the shape again you can just brush with the white color and you're gonna make that layer visible again uh, visible again if you have removed it right and you can also experiment here with the uh, opacities right so as I, guess, uh, as I said each of these layers has this uh, color fill layer about it so if you wish to change the color of this one you just double click on this color box and you can choose any uh, any color that you like so I'm just gonna double click uh, on this layer here and what I like to do is to just choose the colors uh, using these um, eyedropper tool just click on the or the subject and grab some color from there for example I choose this one I'm gonna choose this one choose this Alright, and um, what we got here is the, uh, it says a draw shape here, so what you have to do, if you wish to add another shape, uh, your some custom shape in the in the background, you just select this layer thumbnail, and you select the custom shape tool, click on this layer here, and you can just click on this um, gear icon here, and choose all, to add all shapes, just choose OK. Oops, sorry, and uh, now I have all these default shapes, and you can choose uh, any shape that you like. So, for this example, I'm going to choose um, I'm going to choose this one here. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, and just going to hold the shift button while drawing the shape. So just click and drag, uh, when if you're uh, uh, holding a shift button, you're going to keep the proportions of the shape and just do it like this. So now you can move this shape around if you like and uh, to position it as you like and you can also uh, transform it. So you can press Control command T and then uh, transform the shape. But as you could already also notice here this layer has a, a layer mask so if I disable it the shape will be fully visible, but this uh, shape, uh, this layer mask is going to give these change the edges of the shape uh, slightly. So, if you wish to transform this uh, layer now, you first we have, if you want to transform the layer mask, you can just press Ctrl or Command T and uh, just transform the layer mask like this. But if you wish to transform uh, the layer, the shape, then you can right click on this layer and choose Rasterize Layer. Otherwise, when you transform this layer, it's going to transform the layer mask as well, right? So now when it's rasterized once, so you can just select these and transform this layer as you like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this layer mask and press Ctrl or Command T and just gonna going to transform it a little bit like this. Okay, so just hit enter and then you can double click on this color fill here and then just choose the color uh, for your shape. So you can choose any color as you like. You can use something like this. And then you're going to select the, this shape layer and just going to drop down its opacity a little bit. Alright, like this. And um, let's see what we got next here. We got a subject, All right? So if I if I hide the subject uh, folder, then you'll see that you will have these uh, background shapes all visible here, and also uh, subject highlights and the edges. So when you open the folder, here we got the main subject layer, and here we got the subject levels. So what this layer does actually increases the number of levels. So it's actually adding uh, more shapes to the drawing and you can change its opacity here. Okay, and here we got a subject stroke. So this is just a stroke 
around uh, your subject. Okay, and next we got here are the subject edges. So if you just hide and uh, turn this layer off and down, you'll see a difference. And um, you got white edges and uh, black edges. So you can change the opacity here. Okay, and if you wish to remove any of the edges, you can just select, for example, you wish to remove some of the black edges. <coughs> Excuse me. You can just select the layer mask of the black edges layer, set foreground color to black, and just brush over the black edges that you wish to remove. And it's the same for the white edges. So you select the layer mask of the white edges and just brush with a black brush or the areas we wish to remove them. All right, so uh, the next uh, folder we got here are the subject highlights. So we got a, uh, this one here, uh, it's creating a little bit uh, larger uh, highlights area and you can change its uh, opacity here. I'm gonna drop it down a bit. And here we got a, uh, another uh, highlights uh, layer. Okay. And you can also remove any of these highlights uh, if you wish by you can brush into this main layer mask of the folder then you're going to remove any of the highlights or if you wish you can simply remove uh, highlights uh, from just one of these two layers for example this one or just from this one all right next we got here is the overall contrast so how you change the contrast is you actually change the opacity of this layer Right, and here we got the overall brightness. So when you double click here, um, you got these five sliders to adjust the brightness. So this one here is gonna boost the shadows. This one can uh, boost or uh, is affecting the um, uh, the mid tones, right? And uh, so you can either boost or uh, make uh, make the mid tones. Um, brighter or darker and this slider here is boosting the highlights and you got these two sliders this one is going to fade the shadows and this one is going to fade the highlights okay and here we got the color looks so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, you can choose from 20 percent color looks and all you have to do is to just select the color look that you like and uh, just turn it on see how it looks if you don't like it simply uh, try with another so let me just show you uh, all the color looks that the action creates. And this one is creating a black and white effect. All right, so and what you can also do is to combine a few color looks and that is exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm gonna select, uh, I'm gonna use the color look one, but you're just gonna drop down its opacity, something like this. And uh, I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to drop the opacity. And I'm going to use uh, this layer here. Uh, this color also is going to also drop the opacity a little bit. I'm going to use this, uh, these three color looks. All right, and here we got the overall vibrancy saturation. So you double click here, and then removing these two sliders, you can adjust the both vibrance and the uh, saturation. All right, and finally we got here the overall sharpening layer. So um, why hide uh, why hide that layer on the beginning of the video is because if you just move it around, you will see that all these lines that are the edges uh, of the of the complete design after the action is finished but uh, if you're making some changes you add some more shape you remove some of the shapes and the other you have to update these lines as well these edges to, to get a, a correct sharpening so how to do that is just delete this layer and then just press ctrl alt shift and d or command option shift and d 
to make a screenshot and then just control or command shift U to desaturate this uh, layer then go to filter other high pass and set radius to 2 pixels and then just change the, uh, change the blending mode of this layer to overlay and then you can change the uh, amount of sharpening by changing the opacity okay I'm pretty much happy with this effect so let's just quickly check the before and after so this is the before and this is the after Alright, so I hope you understood everything, but if you still need any help or you got any questions, uh, feel free to contact me anytime via my Envato profile page. Uh, thanks for watching.